Cesar. Io sono nove spiriti. Ok. Okay, so welcome back to this last uh, session of the, of the conference, of the MAX conference. As you will see, uh, uh, the, the program has changed slightly. Alessandro Coglioni apologizes, but he's unable to be uh, here today. Uh, so we had to shift the program uh, upwards, essentially. Uh, the session is on uh, uh, deep uh, data analytics in material science. So we, we hear a lot about uh, machine learning in these last uh, three talks. Um, uh, there will be uh, some, some uh, brief uh, uh, closing remarks uh, by Elisa Molinari at the end, uh, after which you're all encouraged to stay. We're going to have a very short, uh, brief ceremony uh, to award uh, the uh, it's, uh, this, uh, graduation ceremony for the uh, students of the uh, joint ICTP and CISA uh, master's program in, in HPC. Uh, so you're all, you're all, of course, invited to stay. It's just going to take a few minutes uh, 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 when we give the, uh, the certificates to the students. So we start with the first talk of the session, which is uh, Roberto, Roberto Carr, on uh, deep neural networks and molecular dynamics. Uh, please, Roberto. Thank you, Sandro. And uh, yeah, uh, so um, I must say that uh, uh, this work uh, uh, is uh, uh, the thesis uh, project of a, an excellent uh, student, uh, Lin Fong Zhang, and in fact uh, I learned from him <laughs> all what I know about uh, neural networks. So, uh, well, what are deep neural networks? Well, uh, these are, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, sort of algorithms that uh, uh, can learn uh, a very complex uh, uh, functional dependence uh, of uh, some physical properties uh, uh, from suitable descriptors. Uh, of course, uh, in order to learn, they have to be uh, properly trained. Now, uh, deep neural network are extremely more powerful than standard. So, in, in, in some sense, one can say that uh, these deep neural network are some sort of interpolating uh, uh, technique. Uh, but they are much more powerful than standard interpolation approaches like, for instance, Spline, Fourier, uh, etc. In fact, uh, seemingly, uh, seemingly, they do not suffer the curse of, dim of dimensionality. That seems seems to be the uh, main uh, uh, important property that they have, and one may ask why. Well, I put there a question mark because uh, there are no, uh, there are some uh, mathematicians who are uh, uh, trying to uh, understand uh, more fundamentally why they work in this way, but so far my uh, uh, mathematician collaborators uh, 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 tell me that uh, there are no uh, theorems that really prove this, uh, this thing. So, uh, let's see what we do. Uh, uh, with deep neural network and molecular dynamics. Essentially, the first thing, I will talk about two applications of uh, uh, deep neural network. And uh, in the first one, I will uh, uh, discuss how uh, this network can learn the many body uh, potential energy surface obtained from ab initio uh, molecular dynamic simulation. And uh, in that way, they boost uh, the accessible size and time scales of simulation because uh, uh, they make possible uh, simulation of uh, ab initio molecular dynamics quality at the cost of empirical force field. Uh, remember that ab initio molecular dynamics uh, are uh, uh, simulation in which the potential energy surface is derived uh, from the uh, uh, instantaneous electronic ground state. And uh, the second uh, uh, application that I will uh, consider uh, is uh, uh, to coarse graining. And uh, uh, in that area, uh, deep neural network uh, open new perspective. 
and uh, uh, just I want to make uh, a comment here. In this case, uh, the potential energy surface is available from the, uh, what I call the microscopic uh, uh, underlying physical model, but uh, when we do coarse graining, so we eliminate uh, some variable, uh, uh, the uh, potential energy surface uh, is uh, a free energy landscape, uh, and we do not know uh, 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 the explicit form of that. We can only obtain that from simulation. Uh, and so I will discuss uh, two schemes that uh, we have developed uh, at Princeton. One is called deep uh, molecular dynamics and the other one is called deep coarse graining. Uh, now, uh, what is deep? Deep means that uh, we have uh, a neural network that is uh, multi-layer, uh, is made by different layers, uh, and that, uh, again, is something that uh, uh, made a big uh, uh, improvement uh, in neural network because uh, 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 by having more than one layer, which is a shallow network, it allows uh, uh, one to capture uh, rather complex uh, uh, nonlinear dependence uh, from uh, the parameters. So, let me uh, uh, discuss the DPMD approach first. Uh, in this approach, the atomic coordinates uh, uh, of a multi-atom system are transformed into descriptors, and uh, uh, these descriptors are given in input to a deep neural network in a way they have to be given in a way that preserves the translational, rotational, and permutational symmetry of the system. And then uh, uh, in output, the deep neural network uh, uh, gives the potential energy surface of the system as a sum of atomic contribution. So we have the energy of the system as sum of atomic energy where each atomic energy depends on the coordinates of the atoms that are in, uh, an environment, in the environment, in a local environment of this atom within a cutoff radius uh, RC. Um, uh, now, these, uh, obviously, this uh, atomic energy do not uh, have uh, a uh, physical meaning, but their sum does, uh, is the potential energy uh, of the system. And uh, uh, so, uh, there is uh, a paper for that in the archive, and also a paper in this journal that uh, describes the representation that general concept of the representation that we use. Now, uh, essentially the representation that we use uh, is indicated here. Uh, what are uh, uh, these, uh, uh, so we, uh, for each atom, let's say this is, uh, I will use as an example water in uh, most of this uh, talk. And so these are water molecules. And uh, for each atom, uh, for instance here we consider the uh, atom at the origin being this uh, hydrogen atom here, we define a local reference frame uh, by uh, uh, defining uh, uh, an axis is the axis that connected to the oxygen, another axis is orthogonal to the plane of the molecule, and then uh, the third axis is orthogonal to these two. And uh, uh, in this frame, we have the coordinates of all the atoms that are within this uh, coordination sphere. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we give, when we want to give the entire information, we give essentially the uh, coordinate uh, and the angle. Uh, but we give them in this way. It is, there is some redundancy. We have one over R. Well, I, J are the indices, uh, I is the atom uh, at uh, uh, the tag atom at the origin, and J are the atom in the environment. And uh, to have this one over R factor uh, helps because it makes automatically the atom that are more distant, they count, uh, they count less. And uh, uh, um, uh, we give the uh, coordinates uh, in uh, 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 the X, Y, and Z uh, in this way. Uh, and uh, uh, what do we do uh, with the atom in this uh, reference frame? We sort the atom in order of uh, ascending distances from the atom at the origin. 
So in this way, when we have this local reference frame, and because the final, uh, the, uh, well, let me say one more thing. Uh, uh, we order them in ascending distance, and when we optimize uh, the parameter of the network, the weight of the network, uh, we assign to atoms of the same species the same weight. So, in the end, the energy is given as uh, a sum of, uh, 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 of uh, atomic energies and uh, because of this uh, uh, additive form of the energy and because of the way in which we sort the atom, automatically this scheme preserves the symmetries of the system. So uh, what happens then is that uh, this, uh, so essentially this is the schematics of how this works. Uh, these uh, coordinates uh, are uh, transformed into this uh, descriptor for each atom. These are all the atoms in the system. Then we have the descriptor in the environment of this atom. And they go uh, through a series of uh, layers uh, in the network, uh, hidden layers in the network, where uh, uh, there are uh, a sequence uh, of uh, well-defined linear and nonlinear transformation. Uh, that depend on uh, the weight, uh, on these parameters, and, uh, uh, and uh, these uh, parameters that uh, are, uh, 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 that define uh, the, uh, uh, the network uh, are uh, optimized by optimizing this uh, loss function. In the example that I will consider, we consider, uh, uh, we consider actually in the water example that I'm considering, this is actually water at uh, uh, path integral level and at constant pressure and temperature. So we have, uh, this is the uh, energy uh, per atom. Uh, this is, uh, so this is the deviation in the energy per atom from what we get uh, uh, with arbitrary values of this parameter and what we would like to have in the, in the, uh, uh, in the calculation. This is, uh, these are the forces. The forces are very important because if one uses, in principle, one could use only the energy because the energy is an analytic, uh, is an analytic function of the coordinate and the forces are given. But uh, then one would need enormously long trajectories in order to uh, learn uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the potential energy surface. So the forces are very important. Yes? Why not the forces alone? What? Why not just um, it's um, uh, because uh, uh, the, we want to have also the average, the average energy uh, uh, by including also the energy we are sure that we get the average energy, uh, the average energy forces are defined, uh, uh, are defined a modulo a, an arbitrary constant. We don't want to have this arbitrary constant. So, uh, and then uh, uh, this is the, um, uh, <coughs> this is the virial, virial tensor uh, divided by the number of atoms again. So, and this uh, P are just uh, parameter that uh, we adjust uh, uh, in order uh, uh, to have uh, uh, initially the forces uh, play a more important role and then uh, at the end uh, 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 the energy becomes important in order to uh, optimize this thing. And the optimization is done with this uh, stochastic uh, Adam method, uh, which is uh, a, uh, um, uh, essentially a local optimizer, but it is stochastic. Uh, from what I understood, is a sort of uh, uh, precondition uh, gradient uh, uh, descent uh, method, but uh, uh, stochastic because uh, uh, given the large amount of data that one has, one will not be able to use all the data. One uses just uh, a uh, sub set of the data that is, uh, uh, that is uh, selected uh, stochastically and the program from what uh, uh, Lin Fong uh, told me, the program to do that are available from Google and uh, one can and uh, so one does not have to program all that stuff. So uh, at the end of uh, uh, this procedure, 
we get uh, a potential energy surface uh, that uh, has this form. So one can see that uh, as a sort uh, of uh, realization of an embedded atom method, but in which the dependence of the local energy on the coordinate of the, of the atom in the neighborhood uh, uh, is uh, very general and complex. <clears throat> so, now uh, that I have described how it, how, uh, uh, how it is done, how well does it work? So in this case, we do uh, part integral, uh, uh, ab initio molecular dynamics for water, and uh, uh, we consider here the, uh, um, uh, a comparison at the PB0 TS level, uh, and we consider here a comparison between the pair correlation functions that we obtain with, uh, I have to go closer because I cannot read. Uh, this is the DPMD, the red one. Uh, this is also DPMD. The, the continuous lines are DPMD and the dashed line are uh, uh, those obtained from the DFT calculation. So you see that uh, the agreement uh, for all these correlation function is extremely good. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a three-body correlation function. This is the uh, bond angle between uh, 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 oxygen, oxygen bond. And again, the agreement is very good. And this is uh, a uh, Steinhardt uh, Q6 uh, order parameter that uh, uh, actually include information also on four-body correlation. And uh, uh, now, uh, uh, what I can say is that I think that uh, the discrepancies, the little discrepancies that one has there, are actually due to the fact uh, that uh, the uh, original uh, uh, path integral uh, IMD trajectories were too short. <laughs> And uh, there is noise uh, in this uh, trajectory. And uh, 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 so, in fact, uh, these are trajectories, I think, of uh, 10 picoseconds. But you get uh, we, uh, in these, uh, these curves uh, with uh, uh, the path integral stuff have been obtained by uh, running for, I think, 300 or 500 picoseconds, something like that. So there is much less noise. And here one can see, well, that they have also similar data for ice, but let's just consider the liquid water. And so this is the average energy that we get. Uh, this one, uh, I think, uh, is uh, the one uh, from uh, DPMD, and this one is the one from the original uh, microscopic model, and this is the average density in the two, uh, in the two calculations. Now, let me move on. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, the approach uh, scale linearly because uh, these, uh, uh, each local energy depends only on the coordinates of, a, uh, uh, of the atoms that are within the environment. And here there is a comparison. This is a linear scaling. Uh, this is uh, what we get with this DPMD. This is tip 3P. This is a force field, but it's a force field with uh, uh, rigid molecule, and uh, so uh, uh, it is, uh, in fact, cheaper than this thing, but this is much cheaper than, uh, than uh, uh, the uh, density functional, the original density functional calculation. These are at the uh, PBE TS level, and these are at the PBE zero uh, TS level. So, <clears throat> so far, for the uh, uh, first part of the talk. Then I want to discuss uh, coarse graining. So this is uh, some work in preparation. And uh, again, I use, uh, uh, I use two examples here, but the first one is again water. And essentially what we want to do is to generate a uh, coarse grain potential for water that has only the oxygen. And so we want to eliminate the hydrogens. So it will be some sort of, uh, there is for those uh, uh, experts in the water uh, uh, community, there is this Molinero uh, water uh, uh, potential that uh, is a sort of Stillinger Weber potential uh, adjusted uh, for, uh, uh, for water, with parameter adjusted for water. So in this, uh, uh, when uh, we uh, obtain, uh, uh, so now this coarse grain potential is actually, uh, uh, so uh, as, as a function of this coarse grain coordinate, we want to 
project uh, the uh, 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 Boltzmann weight on the uh, 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 on the uh, certain values of the coarse grain coordinate, and uh, this is the potential of mean force uh, that is uh, a uh, free energy, and this is uh, the forces uh, the forces that correspond to this uh, potential. Now the problem is that. Uh, in the previous problem, we had explicitly the form of the potential V, but now we don't have explicitly the form of that because it is a free energy. So uh, what we can do? Well, uh, we can write uh, this now, the, by definition, this uh, uh, force uh, uh, corresponding to the, to the free energy. Uh, is the, now I use uh, psi. Uh, without the CG, but is the coarse grain coordinate, and uh, 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 it is given by uh, a constrained trajectory in which uh, 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 the system evolves uh, 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 by keeping fixed this value of the coarse grain coordinate, and this uh, uh, and this force, uh, this estimator of the force, uh, there are various uh, estimator, uh, instantaneous estimator for the force. We use a formula given by Cicotti, Capral, and Van den Eyden, and that I don't report here, but. Uh, 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 is a simple formula to compute and now we can do the following thing. In principle, the loss function that depend on the weight that we have to minimize again with this Adam optimizer uh, uh, would be given by the deviation of this force that involve uh, a constrained trajectory uh, uh, with respect to the uh, derivative uh, of uh, 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 the potential and this quantity has to be uh, minimized and here we have a sum now m is the number of uh, uh, coarse grain coordinates so if we have oxygen that is the number of oxygen in the system now uh, uh, little uh, lowercase d is the uh, dimensionality of space, so, so it's 3, and uh, 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 this uh, uh, uppercase d uh, refer to the data that we have uh, in, this, uh, 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 in this simulation, to a set of data. Now the point is that uh, if we try to do, to use this formula for the uh, water, uh, it doesn't work. It exceeds, uh, uh, it requires simulation that are extremely long because uh, uh, think about if you constrain the coordinate of the oxygen, there are various uh, uh, configuration of the hydrogen bond that are compatible with that uh, constrained oxygen configuration and uh, in order for the system to uh, explore these different coordinates, one needs uh, time scales that are extremely, extremely long. And so certainly we cannot do it uh, at the level of uh, the uh, IMD at this point, but what we do, we use the DPMD because there we can do uh, much longer simulation. And uh, in this case, uh, we find uh, much more convenient uh, to uh, use here rather than the force that is given by this formula, use uh, the, instantaneous yeah, the instantaneous estimator of the force, uh, uh, and by doing that, this amount to energodicity requirement for the system that is always valid if the system samples an equilibrium, a pure thermodynamic state. Let me just uh, go quickly. Uh, this is, uh, again, the comparison between uh, uh, IMD, and that was on a small system. With this coarse grain, we have done here a somewhat larger system. And uh, uh, this is the uh, DPMD, the green, and uh, uh, the coarse grain red on the small system and the coarse grain in the large system. Again, uh, the agreement and these quantities are this angular correlation at different uh, uh, values at different distances. Again, the agreement, uh, I think, is pretty good. Um, let me, since I want, I don't talk about that, but let's say uh, equilibrium sampling with this uh, DPCG uh, is accelerated by approximately a factor of eight uh, relative to DPMD. 
uh, in this system. Now we don't have any longer the hydrogen, and so the polling ice rule uh, are, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, coarse grained. <laughs> and uh, so, for instance, the Molinero potential has been very useful uh, to study uh, crystallization, uh, and uh, that is something that one could do with this kind of thing, with a potential that in principle has the same accuracy of the uh, uh, original ab initio molecular dynamics. Now, uh, let me go quickly. Well, uh, there are issues related to random noise and multiple minima. Just one thing I want to make a comment on the multiple minima. The point is that, uh, uh, as I said, this Adam is a local optimizer. So if the system has uh, multiple minima, uh, it will get to one minimum, but there are other. And in fact, uh, if we start, if we do uh, all the same thing in this, in this thing, but we start with a different initialization of the parameter, we get to different minima. However, what comes out is that uh, the system, the properties of the system, even if we get uh, to this different minima, are essentially insensitive to that, uh, which means that there must be some sort of uh, profound uh, uh, invariance uh, uh, property that uh, uh, we do not know yet. <laughs> what it is, but uh, uh, that is what comes out. And let me, since I have to finish, let me uh, just uh, uh, present very briefly the last example. So in this case, uh, so in the case that I presented uh, 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 before, we use a number of coarse grain coordinate that is still linear with the system size. So you see uh, uh, we have all the oxygen uh, and we have just taken out the hydrogen. But in many applications, when we want to study uh, uh, conformational changes or uh, uh, structural transformation, uh, one has to uh, 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 map the Landau free energy surface as a function of a few, uh, of a few uh, coarse grain coordinate or order parameter. So here I take as example this alanine dipeptide solvated in 342 water molecule. Here it is at the level of the, the water there is tip 3P and the amber force field is used for alanine. These two angles are the coarse grain coordinate and the coarse grain uh, description correspond to this system without the water, the solvating water. Uh, uh, learning the potential from a simulation that includes the solvating water. We didn't use any, any um, uh, fancy uh, enhanced sampling technique. We just did the brute force calculation, but of course one could use fancy technique. And the brute force calculation here is five microseconds uh, to sample the microscopic model and 600 nanoseconds to sample are used for the coarse grain model. Uh, and this is the result uh, of the free energy surface, uh, the model with solvent and the model solvent free. You see that they look pretty similar. That's the difference. Uh, and we think that the, the difference you see that accumulate at the edges uh, of this barrier. That because in this region we have uh, 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 bad statistics uh, in uh, uh, the simulation. And so we think that uh, uh, by using, uh, by using uh, uh, some enhanced sampling technique and improving the statistics, this uh, uh, should definitely uh, become even better. But that is just to say, kind of thing that one can do. And now, very quickly, open issues. Uh, I just quote a few open issues here. What is the transferability to different thermodynamic conditions? That is something that has to be explored. Uh, what to do? Uh, so far, so good if we have systems that are uniform. But if we have non-uniform systems that are actually the most interesting, like defect or interface, uh, what, we have, what can we do? We have to combine consistently potential obtained by learning in different regions of space for a non-uniform system. And, uh, well, that I can skip. I mean, there are the issue of what can be the dynamics for this coarse grain system, because uh, in the microscopic system we have well-defined dynamics, in this case Newtonian dynamics, but now when we coarse grain there are no uh, uh, closed equation of motion, deterministic equation of motion for that system, and uh, that is something that we intend to investigate, and obviously here typically one does uh, some uh, approximation, like uh, invokes some separate of time scale, and then one can use technique like the Moritz Vanzig projection technique. And uh, 
uh, with that, uh, I uh, want to uh, conclude with the acknowledgement. This is uh, the guy mostly uh, responsible for this work, uh, Lin Fong Zhang, and uh, I should also mention uh, Wen An Yi, uh, a, a professor in the math department in Princeton with whom uh, 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 we are collaborating uh, on this issue, and I thank you for your attention. Thank <clears throat> you.